that was online. A few GMs around. Oh, Simon's around. Ginger GM himself. Well, what happens if I send him a challenge? Play at 3 2. Oh, well, we get an instant accept from some FM. Uh, not that we're not pleased to play you, Schemato, but uh, let us. Uh, oh, we haven't had Dutchers in a while. I've been messing around with 1986 for a long time. And yeah, so let us refresh our memory as to how this goes. Alright, going to play some kind of pseudo stone wall. And going to... Uh, everyone's playing this line these days. I think I can just castle. And play this. And now I'm looking to probably play e5 quite quickly here. Uh, okay, so my opponent's going e4. I think I decided that it was safe to take off this pawn here. And play e5. Amazingly, this is a position that has come up quite a lot for me recently. Um, because the entire world seems to think that one knight f3 is a good move to play against me. And who's to say they're wrong? Uh, I'm certainly not going to say that. Because uh, some pretty good players have been playing this way. Um, so on the downside, that means my opponent's probably a pretty good player. But I have at least looked at this before. So there are some really interesting tactics here. For example, my opponent can try pawn to c5. Uh, well, we're just getting to see this. Bishop takes, queen b3 check. King h8, queen takes b7. But, if I recall correctly, I can play knight d7 here. And even if he takes on c6 and goes a pawn up, I think I'm supposed to have enough play here. Uh, after something like rook c8. Uh, yeah. At some point, there's an idea with bishop d3 here, perhaps. I have to think about this carefully. So, if I go bishop d3 and he goes rook d1, and I play takes, king takes, queen b6, king e1, that's rubbish, I think. Uh, so, I can go queen b6 here, I can play e4. e4 is fun. I can go bishop d3, rook d1, e4. That feels like it might be the most fun thing to do and then some things happen well we have a lot of open lines and I really want to attack f2 so my idea is I have a bishop attacking f2 I can go e4 get rid of the knight then I can have a knight and bishop and rook attacking f2 with a queen that can come to b6 and if he has a way of defending against all of those things, then I'm going to sit in a corner and cry. Uh, rookie 1. So that's trying to stop me from playing e4, or trying to support bishop e3. Uh, I, can, I can't play knight g4, because that would lose a piece. Queen b6 is boring. Let's go e4. I like hack attack sometimes, just because I can not think too heavily about the difficult decision. Does this move look boring? Yes. Am I going to play it? Probably not. Alright, knight g5. I think I can play knight g4. Well, rather than calculating too far ahead, I am simply going to play the moves. Go on then, refute it if you can. Don't forget, guys, John will be joining us for the uh, Hack Attack Halftime Show with another segment of John's Blunderful Games. And, uh, yeah, that should provide an interesting mix. Okay, he takes on e4. I have a lot of pieces on f2. I don't want to take with a rook. That looks rubbish. I could take with a knight. And he takes on c5. Huh. Where's the win here, guys? Maybe there isn't a win. That seems quite likely. 
Knight takes f2, knight takes c5, knight takes c5. But I don't really know what I'm threatening in any of these positions. Can I go queen f6? I'm aware it plunders the queen. But I was kind of hoping it wouldn't matter. But I think it does. Alright. More sensible moves. Queen b6. Takes. Queen takes. Bishop takes f2. Knight takes f2. Knight takes f2. Takes. Takes. Yeesh. What about rook takes? The move that I rejected the most quickly. Knight takes c5. Knight takes c5. Queen takes g4. That's bad. Uh, I don't see the win here. I mean, maybe there just isn't a win. Down to less than 40 seconds. Why don't I just retreat the bishop? Like a sensible person. Uh, oh, we're going to retreat the bishop like a sensible person. And keep up. Now we're threatening knight takes f2. Okay. So he understandably plays that. And then do we win a piece with c4? No, because he's got that covered too many times anyway. Bishop takes... Alright. Oh, we can't be far off some sort of tactic here. What's the material? Three. We have the two bishops in return for two pawns. Um... Saying it like, ooh, almost a terrible move there. Don't want to blunder the knight on d7. Down to 15 seconds. Hopefully, yeah, we do still have two seconds increment, so we should be okay here, hopefully. Just trying to zero in on his king over on the king side here. Um, knight coming to g4, maybe? I have to do something about this bishop. Rook c4 doesn't really do much. He'll go queen a3. So maybe bishop c4. And then jumping in with a knight somewhere. Knight f3 check doesn't make much sense. We are down to the wire here. I have 15 seconds left. My opponent down to less than 20. Two seconds added per move. And, oh, knight here attacks my queen. Okay, where's the safe place for the queen? Uh, how about f7? Looks good to me. Okay, so his idea is that he is removing my dangerous bishop. Um, you know what? We're going to YOLO this and go... No, we're not. I was going to go rook there, but I realised rook takes d3 was a good move. The idea was I need to remove this knight and then go queen f2 check. But recapturing the piece turns out to be more sensible. Uh, queen d4. Um, let's play a move. Ah, uh, we... 0.4 of a second. We didn't lose on time. Uh, I think we are losing material here, though. I think we can take on e4 because the queen f2 check. think we're okay. Rook f1 happens, though. What happens after rook f1? My opponent doesn't find it. Queen goes back to e2. Rook f1 now, but I think that's a move too late. Pieces get swapped off. Going to keep up the pressure on that square. And I believe that I'm winning material. King has to go to h1 and then queen c5 check. Bishop c1 and queen takes f1. And that is game over. Let us just see that variation on the board. King goes to h1. Queen goes to c1 check. My opponent is forced to interpose with the bishop on f1. And then the simplest win is to take with the queen. Queen's come off. And it is good night Vienna. With a rook against only two pawns. Uh, well, that's good game for my opponent. And I'm just going to give him a quick rematch. Well, that was a time scramble. I think my opponent had a win there if he played rook f1 one move earlier but unfortunately for him it wasn't to be that was uh that was one of the reasons that i really like three minutes plus two seconds a move Whew. well let us calm things down with a french tarash well uh you know i get my voice back and uh, play some vaguely theoretical moves. Playing what's known as a universal system against the French. Because you can play it against lots of different lines. It's universally useful. My opponent is trying to swap off his uh, known bad bishop on c8 for mine on d3. Going to force him to waste a couple of tempi in order to do that. And then, uh, try to remember, is this the move I go knight e1? I think it is. I think it must be knight e1 here. 
The idea is he takes, I recapture with a knight. Maybe my queen can come to g4. And do something scary. So, I think they're supposed to go knight c6. Then we see queen g4, g6, knight f3. Vaguely feels like we're following a game that I saw Michael Adams play once as white. Against somebody else. Uh... So I think this is still some kind of theory. I might have mangled it ever so slightly, but I don't think so. So it goes something like g6, knight f3, h5, queen probably goes to f4 or g3, depending on whether or not I want to provoke h4. So if my opponent plays h5, I will think about it. Otherwise, I may well be playing h4 myself. Okay, we are still following this kind of stuff. Queen f4 or queen g3. Um... Hmm... Hmm, I think I want to go to g3 here. h4, queen goes back. h4, queen goes back, rook h5. No, I'm going to go to f4. g5, knight takes. Because, yeah, I think he might go h4 anyway. And I really want to play this move and just get a general bind over the dark squares here. Okay. Well, he's not trapping my knight. So I guess this means he's going to castle king... Uh, wing... King side? Maybe he's not castling at all. This game is... Uh, probably of a higher standard than... We're used to on hack attack. As this still is a... Vaguely interesting... Position from a theoretical point of view. I'm not certain about this plan of going c4 and then b5. But we will see. So what's he going to do with that knight? He wants to put it on h7 for some reason? I don't really get it. Let me just play my bishop out. He does want to put it on h7. Okay, is he threatening g5 now? Pawn takes, knight takes... Hang on, just one, two, three, four, one, two, three. He's not threatening g5. g5, pawn takes, knight takes, knight. Yeah, and if he was rook g8, I'm going to irritate him by going queen to h6. And then maybe... Huh. And then maybe rook h8, bishop g5. Alright, I really want to go b3 at an opportune moment. Is that this move? Nope. Uh, I think I want my rooks here and here, since the f-file is hardly likely to uh, open up terribly quickly. Yeah, I think that was the right call, because now, now it turns out that uh, my rook is actually useful on a1. That's good. If I go to e3, then I might look a bit silly. Let's just go rook a2. Huh. Am I getting ready to go knight a1 and b3? I don't know. Really searching around for a plan at the moment, guys. Queen b6. Uh, I'm going to see if this gains me a tempo. I want him to play bishop f8 and then I'm going back to e3 with the queen. And I'm going to claim his bishop is on a worse place square there. Alright, I think my new plan is to open up the queen side now that his pieces are really badly placed for it. I think this sets up... A, no, it doesn't really set up a trick, does it? I'm going to play it anyway. I want to go knight d2 and open things up over here. It's just a question of when. Tricky little game here. Maybe not knight d2. Queen f4. Rook takes c3. Queen to... Huh. Rook takes c3 is a good move there. Right, let's play this move first. Rook b5. Queen f4. Rook f8. Queen h6. Rook there. Queen there. Alright, let's see what move he wants to play after this. He might have to go king back to e8 here. I 
And then I'm going to play knight a3 and force him to give up the bishop for the knight, I think. And then try and go queen h6 and invade on the dark squares. This is a slow and technical game. Um, I think probably after this it will be time for the break in John's wonderful games. Takes and takes. That was forced, otherwise he was dropping an exchange. Alright, so now I have the threat of queen h6 and into g7. So he plays knight there to prevent it. Okay. Are we making progress? I think so. I think so. So I have an option here. Do I go b3 with no particular threat? When I put it like that, it doesn't seem that tempting. So we're going to go here. Oh, at some point I'm going to open this position up, guys. And uh, it's going to be brutal. <laughs> Hang on. Is queen f6 winning material at last? Queen f6, rook h7, knight g5. Huh. Don't think it is. But if he goes there, then knight g5 wins material. That that That's game over, right? No, I mean, maybe not completely game over. It's probably only a pawn. But I have finally broken through after, you know... M it feels like more than... Oh, wait, I'm down to 16 seconds as well. After a lot of manoeuvring, we are getting down to another time scramble where the two seconds added could prove crucial. Going to take off with the queen. Because I really want to go bring my knight into here. Um... Not sure how I'm going to manage that right now. Maybe knight h3 to f4. I put it it's down to less than 10 seconds. I think he makes an odd rook move. His rook is almost trapped, but not quite. Alright, he's trying to evict my queen. Uh, well, that's a piece. I think he is crumbling under this pressure here, guys. And there we have it. We do complete a... 2-0 victory, if an incredibly hard-fought one, against Fide Master Schemato. And yeah, I will be back with more Hack Attack in part two, but before then we have the halftime show 